What's going on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So, last time we were talking about counter stalking, counter surveillance, and we touched a lot on pattern of life. If you haven't yet watched that video, please go back and watch it now. It was last week's Saturday video. To really understand what I'm saying in this video, I would recommend highly going and watching the last one first because we're going to be bringing up some of the concepts that we discussed last time. And we will get back to the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff because I know a lot of you guys like that. But I received enough positive feedback on the last video to justify me doing another one. And there's a lot of really good, useful information in here. A lot of people want to see techniques. A lot of people want to see hand-to-hand, -hand, like grab them, choke them, dispatch them, and go. <laughs> but if it ever gets that far, you're doing everything wrong. It should never get that far. This is the stuff that will actually keep you alive, whether that be stateside, whether that be you, know, you are overseas in a less permissive environment, or whatever the case may be for you specifically, for your requirements. This is the stuff, nonetheless, that will keep you alive. Um, that that hand-to-hand -hand stuff is cool. That's what the channel is about. But I put these videos out kind of as a public service. Yes, I want to get views. Yes, we monetize the channel, of course. Yes, we do sell products, marvelous products, on GutterFightingSecrets.com. But really, these videos are a lot of my personal experience that, again... Why should you listen to me? I've got lots of experience doing this. I've trained at really some of the best schools around all over the world, not, not just around the country, but all over the world. I, I've trained in Britain. I've trained in Denmark. Um, I've trained in Israel. I've trained in some other uh, countries as well, um, specifically with surveillance, counter-surveillance, um, anti-surveillance techniques. And yes, they are different. And I was also a private investigator myself. I've conducted surveillance operations on many different types of individuals. I've been burnt. I've been blown. I've, I've had successful ones. I've had days where I felt like I'm James Bond. And I've had days where I feel like, um, why can't I do anything right? And that's all part of the learning process. So what I intend to do with these videos here is maybe get you a little bit past some of those times where you feel like I can't do any of this stuff right because we all go through it. Unfortunately, when you really need this stuff, when it really matters is not when you want to find out, oh, this doesn't work or that doesn't work because it can cost you and it can cost you big, especially if you're doing this in another country, especially if you do find yourself under some type of hostile surveillance from a terrorist or criminal organization, that's not the time where you want to be figuring out like what works and what doesn't or learning this stuff on the fly. Um, even domestically here, if, if you do find yourself being watched by a stalker or again, some type of criminal affiliated individuals or associations, it's not the time where you wanna play around and figure out what works. It's the time where you wanna really deploy techniques and strategies that that work. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to pick up where we left off last time. We were talking quite a bit about pattern of life and why it's important to be aware that we all have a pattern of life, specifically regarding your, I'm going to call it surveillability. And again, if you haven't watched that, go and watch the other one first. The first video here, it's counter stalking or something like that. How to how to tell if you're being stalked, something like that. Um, so let's jump into it. What do you do when your spidey senses pick something up, um, and you feel like you might be being stalked, or watched, or followed? It's not a good feeling. It's a scary feeling, it really is. It makes you panic, and when you panic, you make mistakes. And even seasoned um, people who do this, 
you will start to make stupid mistakes when you really feel that, oh shit, like I'm being followed. You will, you, the, it's generally unexpected, although sometimes it maybe is, but generally it comes as some type of surprise. And that surprise combined with the fact that you're pretty sure somebody's looking at you and following you around or watching you, it's it's a very, it's not a fun experience and it will cause you to make mistakes. So first of all, let's, let's discuss what to do. Um, what are some of the first things that we should do when we find that, yes, we, we do have somebody watching us I'm I'm just going to say stalking us, but that could also mean, you know, surveillance. Somebody has you under surveillance. Some buddy, some people have you under surveillance. Um, the first thing that we want to do is confirm it. But here's, here's really where it gets tricky. Um, and here's where it makes, here's where it gets nervous. <laughs> In order to confirm it, you can't let them realize that you realize that they are stalking you because they will disappear and they will not come back until they feel that, that you will not pick up on it again. Chances are you will not see that same individual or those same individuals again. Um, especially, you know, if it is a terrorist entity or a criminal organization and they have people to throw at this. Um, certainly if it's a government organization, you probably won't know to begin with um, if they're good. But if in fact it is something to really be concerned with um, and they can throw people at it, if you bug out and just start making erratic moves, they will know very quickly that you are on to them. Like if you look right at them and you like look like you turn white like a ghost and then you start like going down all these different side streets or like just making erratic fucking movements, like they will disappear. Um, but your problems may not have gone away because next time they come back, they will do a lot better. And they will either send better people to do it or they will just be more careful and then you won't pick up on it so when you do pick up on it it's kind of a gift and you want to treat it nicely you you really don't want them to know because you want to confirm this you want to be gathering as much information in your head about these individuals as you can um Typically, what I like to go for is less relevant to what they are wearing because, again, that can be switched up and changed easily. It's more relevant to height, eye color, if that's available information for you, skin tone, facial makeup, um, any tattoos, certainly, things like that. Physical features, gait, and when I say gait, I mean kind of the way that they walk. Do they have a swagger? Are they more stiff? Do they have their hands kind of by their... There's a way that everybody walks. And the more that you look at this, the more you think about it, the more that you can tell people, you know, apart kind of by their gates. This is something that's very hard to change. Um, do they have any physical deformities? Like me, I have a fucked up back. So like sometimes you can definitely tell. Um, do they have a bald spot on their head? Do they have an eye that's fucked up, like whatever. Um, tattoos and physical deformities are real gifts as far as telling somebody apart. Demeanor is another thing that we want to be looking at. Do they look calm? Do they look professional? Do they look like when, if you do make eye contact or glance over at them, do they look like they get startled? Or do they look like they don't care at all? That's something that's real big because that can tell if they're professional or not. If a professional... If you look at a professional surveillance operative, they won't give it the the care at all. They 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 are trained that way to just keep on walking. Even if you like turn around and look right at them, they might look at you like what, and then just keep going because again, that's how we're trained. Um, we're trained to realize that you don't know who we are, and if we act anything outside of the baseline, that will give it away that we are we are watching you. So if you do turn around and make weird moves. We might look at you like, what the fuck? And then just keep going. But if you turn around and look at somebody and you like give them a little quick death stare, 
Um, do they like freeze? Do they panic? Do they start looking somewhere else? That's that's a key, number one, that they are watching you, but number two, that they don't have much training on surveillance. So you can tell how professional they might be. And that's something that you're going to want to remember because eventually um, you're probably going to want to report this to somebody. Who do we report this to? Well, I mean, locally, stateside, if you're in Europe or whatever, the police are, are is something that you could go to and, and report this to. Um, some foreign countries, if you're traveling in them, you maybe you can trust them, but it's like maybe they're in on it as well, right? So it's harder. It gets a lot harder if you are working in an environment like that or living or traveling to an environment like that where you don't know if you can trust the police or not. Um, again, I can't give you too much advice on that other than other than this. Feel it out. Um, reporting it to the authorities is not necessarily a bad idea. But even if you do, I would start making arrangements to leave the country um, fast. If you pick up on the fact that you are being surveilled um, and you do not believe that it's the government authorities, um, even if you do believe it could be the government authorities and you are you you have no reason to think that you are, you know, under suspicion of whatever, um, even if you do, it, I would I would start making plans quickly to leave that country. And just get out of there because it's only going to get worse and there's really not much you can do about it. Um, pretty plain and simple. I mean, I, I would, I would call your local embassy. I would pass it to them that they might not be able to do anything about it, but they might give you advice on what they think that you should do. Guys, quick interrogative here. I realized as I was editing the video that I gave you a little bit of faulty advice and I really want to correct that just because this is important stuff and I don't want you to ever make the wrong moves, um, especially on any advice that I am offering. And again, this is not advice. Seek your own training, go through proper training, um, but my own what I would do is I mentioned that if you had any suspicion that they thought that you were up to something, the government, the local authorities, right? For some reason, they think that maybe you're some kind of something, right? And I'm being vague, deliberately vague here, but I think you know what I mean. Um, that I would go ahead and start making arrangements to leave the country. Now, this is actually bad advice. And it's not necessarily the wrong advice because you have to you have to make your own decisions and you have to be able to think clearly and critically enough to make your own decisions. But I do just want to interject with this. If for some reason you find yourself in a country and you think that they might have the wrong impression of what you're doing in that country, Actually, the last thing that you'd want to do would be to bug out and leave the country. Um, they might simply be wanting to figure out who you are and what the fuck you're up to. And if you are simply a tourist and that's all you're doing, um, it might actually behoove you to continue doing exactly what you're doing and ignore it. Now, again, this is something that I can't tell you what to do. The decision is yours, ultimately. However, however, um, I want you to be aware that any deviation from the baseline, any deviation from your normal pat pattern of life could be construed as um, something that you don't want it to be construed as. And I think you catch my drift on that. So before I continue with the rest of the video, I wanted to tell you this, that it could simply be a foreign government trying to figure out who you are. Um, and again, if you're looking for this stuff, that's when you will find it. If you're not looking for it, you might not see it or notice it. 
there are levels to this stuff. There are levels to how many resources they will typically dictate or dedicate rather to you. If they are just trying to figure out who you are, it might be one guy, might be two guys, something like that. And they might look at you for a day or two and then fuck off. Um, but you should be aware that if they send a guy or a guy or two at you and they kind of look at you for a little bit and then they think that you are potentially worth more assets, dedicating more resources to you, they will also fuck off, but they will dedicate a larger team to you. And that larger team will be harder to, harder to figure out that they're even there in the first place. They will start to use four vehicles. They will start to use four, five, six people um, on that surveillance operation, let's call it. And if you do anything where it's like, oh, wait, why is he immediately making like reservations to get the fuck out of the country? Like they'll know, right? Like, why is he calling up, you know, Uga Booga Airlines and panicking and like taking all his stuff and packing and leaving? Like, what's he up to? Maybe we should take him in for some questioning, right? So I wanted to interject with that because I don't want you to ever make the wrong moves. And again, this is not, I'm not giving you advice here. I'm simply laying out the facts. Listen to your intuition about this stuff. Um, there could be a time where, again, if you think it's like a terrorist organization or criminals that want to kidnap you, yeah, sure. Like getting the fuck out of the country is a good idea. But if you think, hey, maybe they're just seeing who I am, maybe it's like I'm in a sketchy country and they don't typically get like an American white dude around here and they're just kind of trying to figure out what I'm up to. Um, there's also that. And you don't want to panic and bug out and like try to do any funny spy shit because then they will take you as that. And once that happens, it's going to open up a really big can of worms for you. And you, it's the last thing you ever want to happen. So there's a time, again, to continuously play it cool. And then there's a time to kind of say, uh-oh. Uh but calling your local embassy and reporting it to them, if there is an embassy there, getting in touch with somebody professional about this would be the best option for you. And that way, channels can be going through and you can start to formulate and put together a plan. But I, I just didn't want you to ever be in a position where you make the wrong move and then that traps you up. Let's go back to the video. When I've had to deal with this in another country, I did not contact the embassy. I, I simply left the country. And I was able to make it out, thank gosh. Um, it is a scary feeling. But that's very much for a niche kind of group of people. Not many people do this where they travel to foreign countries, but a lot of us, a lot of us have the potential to run into this thing even in our own home country. Again, whether it's a crazy ex boyfriend, girlfriend, whether it's somebody who's just taking a really fucking weird liking to us. Um, maybe it's a gang related thing or terrorist related thing. Luckily, within your own country, specifically within the United States and Europe um, and the UK, you can report this to the authorities and they will help you with this. But again, it's important that you remain cool, collected and level headed so that these individuals don't necessarily realize that you are reporting them to the authorities. They don't necessarily realize that you're on to them. Because again, as soon as they do, they're disappearing and you won't see them again for a while, hopefully. Um, and if you do, it makes your job reporting it, you know, and having whoever it is help you, help you, makes your job easier. But there's going to be a brief period where you realize that you are under surveillance and you're confirming it. This is a adrenaline producing experience and you're going to want to run. Your fight or flight is going to kick in 
and you're going to want to simply just evade and get away. But again, unless you're in immediate danger, it's actually counterproductive. So remember these words. Unless you're in immediate danger, collect as much information as you can about whoever is surveilling, following, or stalking you and discreetly report it in. Let the authorities handle it from there. If you can get on the phone or even text 911 or whatever and start discreetly passing on information about this person and they can intercept this individual, that's the ideal course of action. Now you'll hear things about, well, drive to your local police station or find your nearest police officer. But again, um, this could be counterproductive. Having a police car intercept them if they are following you mobile uh, in a vehicle <clears throat> and pull that car over and then start questioning them, looking for suspicious surveillance equipment in the vehicle, they have probable cause to then search the vehicle and they can start handling it from there. This is way better. Or if you are on foot, again, having officers or somebody intercept them at some point and you giving your location and updates and everything, intercepting that person is always the best option. And I'm not saying wait a day to do that. I'm saying right then, be discreet as possible so that they don't know that you're on to them. I think we've hammered that home. What are some ways that we can actually confirm if this person or people are following us? Well, there's a number of ways. Um, there's the old school method of seeing them more than three times. You know, the first time that, you know, you see somebody, obviously, whatever. The second time you see them, it could be a correlation. It could just be, hey, they're on the same route as me, right? They're they're feeling it. They're on the same vibe. They're on the same wavelength. Um, they're being mindful and demure, just like you are, right? And okay, whatever, you run into them again. But the third time you see them, that's a definite mistake. That's a definite correlation, right? And your, your spidey senses should be going off at that point. Um, does it automatically mean that they're following you? No. But um, that's odd to see somebody in three places, three different places. And so when I say three different places, how far apart should these places be? Well, if you're on foot, this could be several city blocks or, you know, something like that, making a route that is doubtful that anybody would really follow you um, all the way through all of these routes. But the tricky part is here you have to kind of make this route that you're taking part of a pattern of life. It, you know, in the, in the spook world, they call this like a surveillance detection route, SDR. None of us are going to go, you know, when, when you're trained on this stuff, they will tell you to like physically map out and make a surveillance detection route ahead of time. That's none of us are going to need to do that, but you should have an idea of, Hey, listen, I know like my spite, like my fucking everything inside me is telling me to run away right now, but like, let me continue on my journey and just see how far these people follow me. See how many times that I see them again. Right. And it can be difficult because if they have two, three, four people switching out, which is how they should be doing it, um, it's, it's going to be difficult. But again, you start seeing the same faces throughout the course of a couple of hours, then, you know, you've got something there, especially if you see one face and then you see that face somewhere else and you see another face and you see that some, somewhere else, right? They've got to change guys out eventually, right? So even if they have a large team and a large team to me would be more than two or three people, then... Eventually, you'll flush it out. It could take you a while. Um, here's the thing that you have to be careful about with this. What, When do they decide enough surveillance is enough surveillance and decide that they actually want to take you or do something to you? Well, you have to be cognizant of this. 
So stay in public, number one. Don't take any like alleys or side streets, like anything where you could be alone that would give them an ideal opportunity to harm you in some way. Stay around people if you can. And if at any point that you really feel in danger, call it in. Um, as soon as you feel fairly certain that this is actually happening, I would go ahead and, and get in touch with the authorities or somebody. And we can talk more in another video about what to do if you're in a non-permissive environment and this starts happening. But for now, I'm going to leave it as relevant for most of us. In, in Europe, in the United States, in the UK, and, and this is happening, right? Now, what if it's one guy, right? It makes your job easier, frankly, you know? It makes your SDR that you're running, surveillance detection route, going to take less time to confirm that you are being followed. Um, keep in mind also that if it's a one, one person, they could be using a technique where they split up their their surveillance detail. I'm going to say it like this. They could be smart and they could know, well, I'll just watch where they come out of today and then I'll disappear next week. I know they'll be there. You know, maybe I'll follow them for a, a little while longer. Yeah. Two weeks from now, maybe I'll, I'll meet them over here. If I think they're going to be there a lot. And so they minimize their heat signature, right? And if somebody's smart, it's a one man thing, then they will, they will be very careful how long they're on you so that, again, they can min minimize that heat signature. Heat signature, you know, means how long they're following you. The longer you follow somebody, the more likely it is that they're going to make you. If it's somebody with no experience or very little experience, that's good for you. Um, it'll be easier to detect them. And again, as soon as you feel that you've confirmed this, that you're fairly certain about this, or certainly as soon as you feel any danger, call it in. Um, but be discreet about it. Get as much detailed physical description about the person or persons following you, or surveilling you, or stalking you as possible. Now realize it's going to be very hard for authorities to find somebody just based on a physical description. Even if you give them a good mug sketch or something like that, even if you give them a picture, you know, I'm sure that they have their ways through databases that they can start to do their thing, but you'd be surprised. It's hard. Okay. It's hard, especially for like local authorities. It's hard. So if you can have them intercepted, it makes everything so much easier. And this is why we're going to want to number one, stay calm. Number two, work on confirming that this is actually happening. And number three, be extremely discreet at when we call it in so that hopefully this person can be intercepted. One more time, I'm going to reiterate this to you because this is where everybody flounders. You pick up out of nowhere that you're being watched, you're being followed. Everything inside of you is going to be telling you that you need to get away, that you need to just break contact and either run away or lose them, but try to avoid that if at all possible. Again, unless you are in physical immediate danger, gather information about them. If you, if you can get a picture of them very discreetly, even better. And try to try to get them intercepted by authorities or whatever that may be. Um, I hope that this information is never necessary for you, but now you have it if you ever need it. If you like this video, if this was good and useful information to you, if you feel that you have benefited from this information, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments below, okay? Let me know that you liked it. Do more than just a thumbs up. Write me a comment below letting me know that you liked it so that I can continue to make videos like this.
got a lot of great information like this that I can share with you. And I believe that I can give it to you in a way that is absolutely relevant for all of us. I've been through the ringer with this stuff over, over the years. I want to help other people out there stay safe because we are living in an absolutely dangerous and crazy time. And if more people knew about this stuff, less people would be killed, less people would be stalked and kidnapped and all of that. When you know this stuff, you are a hard target. You are a hard person to attack. Give us a thumbs up. Help drive us up in the algorithm. I come to you guys every Saturday with information like this. I take my time to make videos for y'all. I love you, okay? I don't fucking know most of you, but I do. I love you. And I want you to stay safe. Return the favor by giving us a thumbs up, letting me know you like it in the comments below. It's all, all we require of you, all we ask. And if you do want more hand-to-hand -hand combat training, we have online direct download hand-to-hand -hand military grade hand-to-hand -hand combat training that you can click a link put your info in pay for it and it comes directly to you on a private link and this stuff is many many years of experience we will teach you how to remove sentries <laughs> we will teach you how to fight like an israeli commando or a whatever, special forces operative, like that training is now going to be yours. All you have to do is purchase it. Gutterfightingsecrets.com. Gutterfightingsecrets.com is the website. Go there, hand-to-hand -hand combat tab. Grab your training today. And if you want, you can pick up a t-shirt, show your support as well. All of your purchases are more appreciated than you know. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And stay safe out there, guys. The world is burning all around us. But we need to have keen wits about us to keep ourselves safe and thusly keep others around us safe. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers, Mother Flowers.